So what is going on YouTube, my name is Mehul and welcome to your ninth Angular 6 tutorial in which we're going to take a look at what two-way data binding is and how to work with two-way data binding in our Angular applications. So let's get started. Okay, so let's first of all start with what actually two-way data binding actually means. So in the last tutorial, what we did is that we discussed how we can take some interactions from view side to our um, JavaScript side and from our JavaScript side back to our view side. For example, sometimes you want to know when the user clicked a certain button. So in that case, what are you looking for is that you want some data from the view side into your JavaScript, into your controller kind of thing. And other times, um, what you want is that your controller should update some data in your view. For example, you're fetching some data from some REST API and then you want to display it. In that case, what you want is that the JavaScript which fetches the API, the data from the API, it should update your view. So in this case, in these two cases, what we are doing is that in first case, we are binding data from view to controller or view to our JavaScript. And in the other case, we are binding data from JavaScript to view. Now, what if in some cases, for example, um, the best one is that you want to mirror your input text. In that case, what you want is that, for example, if you take a look, um, let's just create an input type text here real quick. And, and now if you take a look, for example, whatever I write here, you want to display here as well. So that's mirroring. So in that case, what's happening is that I'm updating the view as a user, I'm updating it. So I want it back in the controller. Now the reason I want it back in the controller because controller updates the view. So what I want in this case, if you realize is two way data binding. I want the view to update the controller or our JavaScript file in this case. And our JavaScript file will update the mirroring value here. So we need to edit data binding here. So how do we do that? Well, um, we can make use of uh, what we did in the last tutorial to achieve the same. Now, Angular, if you have used Angular JS, then it actually come came with a baked in two way data binding system, but Angular kind of mimics it. Angular from Angular 2 onwards. So there's a way, in G model is a way, but uh, um, it's not really actually two-way data mining. We are just making use of both the data bindings to make it like two-way data mining. So for example, if we want to mirror this input type text value, what we need to do is we'll write value in here. Now this binds it to our controller, to our JavaScript, right? So let's just say I write something like text. And what I want is that when I write into this input, I want to get that text into my JavaScript. So this value, what it does is that it would reflect value, whatever is the value of this text variable. For example, if we change this um, after component file, change this to text, hit save, take a look. You can see that we get app. So this binds it to the value of the input type field. Okay, now we are, our controller, our JavaScript is updating the view. Now we want our view to update our JavaScript. So in that case, what we have is this input direct input handler. And what this would do is that it would help us to update the, um, value for this text variable so let's just say i call something like uh, update value like this and what i want is i want to pass in a special object here called event now let's just take a look at what this object actually is so what i want is that my method here is update value right so i'm just gonna paste it and say e is my event so i can just console dot log it e there we go and if i save it take a look in the browser 
open console. Now if I go to my input field and start writing, you can see that I get an input event whose target is our actual input input field, right? So if I do like e dot target dot value and hit save, let it reload. Now if I go to console and start writing here, you should see that the values update right here. Okay, now how do we update this? Well, this is now, this should be easy. What we have to do is just write this dot text is equal to e dot target dot value. There we are. And now what I want to do is just pretty much write text in here. Right. And yep. So now, if you take a look, you can see that we get it mirrored. If I write something, this is two-way data binding. I'm writing this in the view. It goes to my JavaScript file. That is one part of two-way data binding. The JavaScript updates the variable on the view, which displays the text, and view is updated by that particular variable. So this is our two-way data binding. Now, um, you can also implement two-way data binding with your custom directives which we would take a look at later on in the series how to create custom directives but what essentially the part is that these directives so what these directives are for example this value directive and this input directive these are the directives which angular provides out of the box and uh, what we can do is we can actually create our own directives as well which we can make to a data binding possible in those we can make that and one such example is ng model which pretty much just does whatever we have done so far in a very simple statement so for ng model what we do is that we just write ng model inside a square bracket and a parenthesis right so how we do that is that we just write ng model a square bracket, a parenthesis, ng model, and we write the name of our variable here. In our case, this is text. Hit save. App dot component. We do not need this function anymore. Hit save. Now the thing is that ng model is not really part of um, your basic app, so you need to import that. You can see that we get ng model is not a known property of input so what we can do is we can go to our modules file we can import from angular forms because that is a part of form and we would write ng model here just like this and now what i want is that i want to import this module Right now, we can just clear off the difference between declarations and imports here as well. As a whole, your application, this application is a module, right? Whatever you are coding is a module. Now, modules, as I said in the very beginning of the series, are independent piece of codes, which can run independent of each other. So, what we are doing here is that we are importing a module, ng model, from Angular Forms which is an independent module capable of running standalone, right? And that's what happens here. So we import that module into our own module, whereas this declaration is used to add components and directives and other stuff, pipes into your application. Providers is used to inject services. We'll take a look at that later on. So the main thing here is that import is used to add, um, you can say feature based modules into your main application. And that's what we are doing here. So whenever you are importing some different module into your app, you need to get that, put that into import section. And whenever you are writing your own component or directive or pipe, you're gonna put that into this declarations. So hit save. Now we have ng model in here, so we should be good to go. Now, if we take a look here and let it recompile, 
okay and if we take a look in the code unexpected directive ng model and that is because this is not ng model this is forms module we need the forms module from the angular forms and if we save it now take a look here we should be able to see that if we write something here it successfully gets mirrored so ng model is a directive which is inbuilt for you which acts as a two-way data binding directive now we can create our own two-way data binding directives as well as i said we'll come to that later on in the series but that's all for this one and if you liked it then don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching and i'll see you then in the next video and one more thing if you like this video then don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to receive instant notifications